Hello and welcome to another flight report. It's been four and a half months since I was able to say the sentence and I'm so glad um, that I could finally fly again. I'm going home finally after four and a half months in Bali on Turkish Airlines on a 777 to Frankfurt with a stop over in Istanbul. But if you have been wondering what I've been up to in the past four and a half months, check this out. Spreading so quickly around the globe, it may only be a matter of time before it begins rolling across. The it all started in early March when the corona crisis turned into a global pandemic. I decided to leave Singapore and move to Bali, knowing that I'll be grounded for quite some time probably. I was quite lucky I guess, because I found myself a beautiful villa in the heart of Seminyak which should become my home for the next couple of months. I spent a lot of time baking at the pool, jumping into the pool and yes of course floating in the pool with my dear new friend Donald. But yeah, I also managed to reach level 178 at Fortnite and I constantly got my ass kicked by very overcompetitive 11 year old brats. But today I ordered over 50 lunch boxes and I'm gonna give them out to like less fortunate. But unfortunately, Corona was also the worst crisis that has ever happened to this beautiful island of Bali. I mean, besides of Russian tourists, but every week I would buy lunch boxes for the ones that lost their jobs during these difficult times. But most importantly, I took some time off from all the travel madness of the past two years, over 200 flights, and while the world stood still, I spent time exploring the island and its beauty away from all the party madness of Kuda and Changu. I took long walks at the beach and enjoyed sunsets, thinking what a post-corona world would possibly look like. So very special day, I'm gonna go pick up my merch, hoodies, hats, masks, you gotta need masks these days, so let's go. Thank you, how are you? Good. You good? So if you need anything printed in Bali, you go to Bobby, right? Thanks. There you go. So yeah, if you're interested in my new merch, why don't you check out the link in the description box below. Maybe you find something for your next trip. Oh yeah, and well, I also Danke. turned Danke. 34. Danke while in lockdown in Bali. But apart from all this, I also found my spiritual self. I became a vegan, I meditated 12 hours a day, quit sex and drinking and converted to Hinduism. Nah, just kidding. When Europe finally announced to lift travel restrictions, I knew that it was finally time to get out of Indonesia. But the only way to do so was through Jakarta since there were still no international flights leaving Denpasar, Bali. I took a COVID test, packed my bags and started my long journey home. So yeah, and today it's probably going to be a little bit of a different flight as I already said. Turkish Airline has introduced a lot of measures um, regarding the coronavirus. However, I still refuse to believe that there is going to be a new normal. It's, uh, it's temporarily, but we go back to flying as it used to be. And I'm very sure about this. So I don't want to like be another flight review here where I say, oh, flying during a pandemic. Of course, I'm flying during a pandemic, but I want to just be positive and like, like point out and showcase the measures uh, Turkish Airlines has introduced uh, during these uh, difficult times. We're flying a 777 today. It's already standing there at the gate. And yeah, I'm like so excited to actually go back flying. And um, I'm sure it's going to be quite an adventure and I'm going to document the journey all the way um, uh, to Istanbul. So let's go to the gate and let's find out what it's like to fly Turkish Airlines these days. 
So I also have to point out that the check-in experience was very pleasant. Social distancing was in place, it was very organized, and they also quite enforced that you can't take any like baggage, like trolleys. So everything that um, you want to take into the, inside the cabin must fit under the seat. And there she is, what a beautiful sight. The Boeing 777 of Turkish Airlines, 777-300, which I've flown probably 10, 10, 11, 12 times. It's usually always a good experience. So let's see how it, this one is going to be. Okay, thank you. All right. Journey home is about to start. So welcome on board Turkish Airlines uh, 777, long journey home. Um, boarding was, well, once again, I had to show my passport. You have to scan your own boarding ticket so um, the ground staff won't touch it. At the door, I was giving a hygiene kit, the new amenity kit of 2020. Um, but also the crew is wearing uh, protective shields as well as mask and uh, yeah, like it wasn't an overwhelming welcome. It's always the thing with Turkish Airlines crew, it's always a bit weird. Um, but yeah, cabin seems pretty empty. It seems like that they're gonna have social distancing um, on this flight, so they block the middle seats or the seat next to me. So um, as you know, I've reviewed Turkish Airlines many times, you know, it's 300 seats in economy class. It's still a three, three, three configuration, which you don't find that often on 777s anymore. Um, but yeah, also the business class product, I've reviewed it on a 777 uh, multiple times. If you want to check out those videos, I have it in the link um, below. But yeah, otherwise, look, I have my own, uh, my own entertainment. Um, there was a blanket ready at the seat, and that's pretty much all I found at the seat. Um, can't find a pillow, but yeah, the plane is filling up. And soon we'll be rocketing out of Jakarta. And I was a bit sad. I've been in Jakarta now, or Jakarta, in Indonesia for four and a half months. It's been the longest break I've ever had since I started this YouTube channel. But very excited to see what the board, like the onboard service looks like, whether you get lunch boxes, whether there's going to be hot food or just like some uh, soggy sandwiches. But we will find out and uh, you're part of this journey. So well, we still have time. Um, let's go through the hygiene kit. Um, what we have in here, we have not one but three face masks, antiseptic uh, wipe. I was gonna say wipe, wipe. So two of them, hand sanitizer. I think this is a very nice thing or gesture of. Turkish Airlines to provide passengers with um, masks and stuff. I think it gives you a peace of like mind that if you know, okay, I have hand sanitizer, all that kind of stuff. Um, it makes traveling a bit more carefree. I don't know how many airlines that actually do that. And um, very interesting. Yesterday, uh, in the hotel on the lift, I met someone who came on, uh, who came on this very flight last night. From Istanbul and he said there was no social distancing the flight was full um, but I'm actually glad to know that they're practicing it on this flight here also the airport is empty I, it seems to be the only international flight leaving this morning last night when I arrived I saw a few Asian carriers like Japan Airlines ANA um, uh, Qatar and Emirates. This is like usually really, really busy 
um, airport where you would have literally a plane at every gate. But yeah, different, different times right now. So crew is getting the cabin ready. Two things that are very particular about is wearing a mask and you cannot change seats. So in case somebody is infected and it spreads, they can track it with their bag. So there's a few angry passengers who wanted to have um, an empty middle row, but understandably given the situation, um, uh, you should stay uh, to on your assigned uh, seat. But shortly you're going to push back and then you're going to take off. And damn, I can tell you I've missed it. I'm already getting like excited. And, yeah, it's been a while. And this was it. It was finally time to say goodbye, my dear Indonesia. Just given uh, breakfast, lunch, or whatever, and as expected, it is just a box. And yeah, I'm gonna show you uh, what's inside the lunch box. To my surprise, the lunch box was rather disappointing. On my Garuda Indonesia flight the day before, I was also served a lunch box, but instead of a cold and boring sandwich, it consisted of a hot meal. So yeah, that's the lunch box, like no comparison to what you're usually being served on uh, Turkish Airlines, which usually stands out for the best catering in the world. Uh, yeah, but that looks rather sad. And uh, one thing, pandemic or not, which is annoying is when the crew forces you to put the window shades down. Like it's a day flight, come on. Like it's up to me if I want to leave it open or not, right? Uh, some things will never change. Not even Corona can change some really annoying habits. Yay! And after four and a half months, the new reviews are back. And uh, today we have a very interesting new and a rather like the back, uh, the rear end of the 777, which is beautifully spacious comes with a wonderful blue wallpaper uh, a sink amenities cologne look at this look how nicely presented it is uh, you have cologne you have uh, hand and body lotion uh, and in times of times of corona of course hand sanitizer uh, lovely towels and I mean that is amazing I mean like four and a half months no lure review and this one is like really topping it uh, here the mirror turns into like a nursing table so if you travel with your with your one year old or whatever you can change your nappies but this is actually um, a very lovely very lovely avatar here in the back of the Turbo 7. Nice scent to it, smells really good. Uh, yeah, this is it, this is the Louvre review. I hope you missed it. If so, let me know in the comment section below. Well, happy, happy to be back at work. <laughs> uh, otherwise, the, the flight is, it is a bit of a weird atmosphere to it, to be honest. Uh, the lunch boxes, the crew is very uh, sensitive, I'd say. Uh, especially when it comes to mask and generally uh, their working habits uh, it is uh, also different um, atmosphere around the crew so it's hard to judge the service on this flight but generally from my experience Turkish Airlines crew there is sometimes really weird I don't know what's wrong with them um, but yeah 
should be it. Now I really need actually to pee and then uh, probably gonna get my work done. It's like still 10 hours to go. Uh, so I don't know what the rest of the flight is going to look like. Uh, probably no service, nothing. No hot beverages. Um, what to do, hey? But yeah, gotta pee now. So yeah, and if you enjoyed this new review, why don't you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you very much. And yes, as you probably know from Turkish Airlines, they have a pretty decent in-flight entertainment, which was also working on this flight. They also offer free Wi-Fi, but keep in mind that you can only purchase it with a credit card and phone accept debit cards. So this is the, the, uh, the second meal service, um, a bag, I don't know what's inside, but let's, let's have a look. But yeah, once again, a rather boring sandwich, a juice, a water, and a chocolate muffin. Uh, to be completely honest with you, I don't know what the problem is to like, heat up a few meals, chuck them in the box and serve them uh, to your customers just the way Garuda did it yesterday. Um, it doesn't increase the contact between crew and uh, passengers so there's no, they don't need to be worried about social distancing. I think in the end here this is just Turkish Airlines trying to be a bit cheap. Yeah, like I was expecting more put out such a gloomy shiny PR program um, so they care and then they serve such nonsense like I'm not really too impressed so after ten and a half hours uh, we finally descending into Istanbul um, I'm gonna give you a full summary on the ground but a uh, short version now uh, I wasn't too impressed with this flight. Uh, there's so many things Turkish Airlines could have done better during a pandemic or during uh, these circumstances. But um, yeah, that was the short version for now. I'll give you a full comprehensive summary uh, at the airport. For now, enjoy the descent and the landing at uh, Istanbul. And there I was, finally back on European soil. And as you probably already know, it took exactly 29 minutes to taxi from the runway to our assigned gate. Well, that's the one downside having the world's largest airport. So before I'm gonna sum up this flight, I wanted to say thank you Turkish Airlines for taking me home safely, um, especially in a time where most airlines don't fly anymore. That is very much appreciated. Um, now how to summarize the flight experience. Um, I am absolutely aware that we have a global pandemic and it is very difficult for everyone to work and fly during such times. So taking this into consideration, um, I'd say I liked how Turkish Airlines enforced all the critical measures such as social distancing, uh, mask, etc., etc. It was a very organized flight it was very well enforced and that is very important. Um, now let's talk about quickly about the things I didn't like. Was the prison guard attitude of the crew. I know it's very difficult to work for them, don't get me wrong. And they might just be just as afraid, afraid as we passengers are. But, and this is where I have this point of 
they should be more comforting. They should be, they should at least have a how are you. They should still show kindness um, because also like for us, there's like there was the first flight um, out of Jakarta after five months. And there was still a lot of like passenger who've been stuck, who just wanted to go home uh, so badly. And we have fears and we are afraid uh, too. So I think we should be more work together, hand in hand, and make it easy for, for both sides, you know. So a little how are you, a little smile, even though you wear your mask, you can still see that smile through the mask, makes a world of a difference. And I don't think that the crew needs to be so firm and so enforcing. Um, you can still have a conversation if both parties wear a mask. I heard the, the chance to get infected if both people wear a mask is just 1.4%. So of course we should limit the contact we have, but there's always time for a little how are you and I hope you're well and don't worry. We get you through this because in your boarding announcement you said we are in this together so let's share the kindness and let's make it still a memorable and kind trip for all of us because how you treat your customer during these times is how you will be remembered after corona and I also do believe on an 11 hour flight you can heat up a meal and chuck it into the box uh, because you can do it in the bag, it doesn't increase the contact between crew and uh, and passengers. How just how I ex experienced it on my flight on Garuda, Indonesia, just the day before. The crew was very comforting. The crew was extremely kind. Still putting all those measures in place, and they gave out a hot uh, meal as well. That would have been the feedback. From, from my side. And I know it's a difficult flight and for most of the crew it was the first flight after a long time. And um, that being said, I still are very grateful that Turkish Airlines is flying. But those are the little things that I like to see. Comfort your passengers, give them also the feeling that it's gonna be okay. And that goes a long way. And this is what you're going to remember instead of acting like prison guards. And I heard a lot of airlines still like Emirates or like Singapore Airlines. Uh, they do are trying very hard uh, to comfort their passengers. I think it makes feel everyone a little better. This is it. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to find the right words and to express uh, my feelings. And I hope that we can soon go back to normal. That should be it. That was my flight report. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. And yeah, it's it's difficult. I know. I, I know. It's not easy to to sum it up. But uh, all I have is a lot of gratitude for Turkish Airlines. Should be it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna spend some time in Europe now. Thank you.